Welcome everyone to the BX Sports Yard Network with, with um, MMA Weekly of Austin and in. I'm one half of the co-host with MMA Weekly. I'm Austin and I just want to do a video, a nerd video talking about the big fight I got announced for April 15th between Max Holloway and Arnold Allen. And also, I didn't cover this in my last video that I should have, which was for March 11th, the main event of that card, which was between Marab Devashrelli and Pierre Yon. I do want to talk about, that, talk about those fights real quick. And so I'm just, I'm just going to do that. This shouldn't be too long a video. I don't know. Maybe like a, a 10, 15 minute video. We'll wait and see. But thank you guys for the love support. Give the channel. And thank you guys for supporting this video, the channel. And well, um, let's get started. So I'm going to go in chronological order. I'm going to start with Marab Dorishrelli and uh, PR Yano since that fight's happening first. Let's just pull up real quick and then we'll go from there. So yeah, March. March um, 11th, main event of that card is going to be Peorion and Marab Mar 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 in from the, in the man and weight division. Great match. That makes sense in the world, considering those are two guys in the top five of that division, and they didn't have no one else to fight. Yon's coming off that controversial loss to um, Sean Malley. In my opinion, he won the fight. It shouldn't be a loss. He won the fight against Sean Malley. Terrible judging in that card. I mean, on that fight, particular, actually, in that fight, I'm not sure about that card, but in that fight, at least, terrible judging, just awful judging. And Mirage come out that victory over Jose Aldo back in August in Salt Lake City. And these are two guys in the top five, made sense of the world. They, they don't, for the two of them, fight each other. And for Marab, I mean, Marab wins this fight, he should fight for the could. You could make an argument he deserves a towel fight next, especially if Aljamain, if he. If Aljamain leaves the division, because Aljamain says he's go, he's going to move up to 145 soon, and he might fight Cejudo and then go up to 145. And Murad doesn't want to fight Aljamain; they don't want to fight each other because they're friends and training partners. And so, if Aljamain does go up 145, it leaves the open leaves the door open for Murad to fight for 135 for the title. But for but he's got to get to Pierian first, which is not going to be an easy task. Because one thing about one thing about Jan is that Jan's used to fighting five rounds. Marab is not. This is first five round fight from Rob in the UFC. Probably maybe in his career, I think. Actually, now I think about it. I could be wrong about his career, but I know in the UFC this is his first five round fight. And Jan's used to this. We all know Jan's got good cardio, great five round fighter. We all know he tends to start, you know, be a slow start, and then as the fight goes on, gets better and better and puts more pressure and does more, typically. And that's why I think Pierre Young, in my opinion, is going to win this fight. To me, he's my—he, I think he's the—he should be the favorite. And I think he's going to win because he's got, got five-round experience. He—he he doesn't get tired as much, and also he's got good takedown defense. I know Aljamain held him down, but remember, Aljamain was twenty of twenty-two of takedowns. Remember, he, he Pierre Young stuffed two. I mean, he stuffed all but two takedowns of Aljamain. It was twenty-two uh, of Aljamain's twenty-two takedown attempts, and that's. That's impressive to think about, considering how you know Aljamain's got a wrestling background, and that's and that shows how good of a take uh, takedown defense Yan does have. Now Aljamain got the back of him and was able, and was able to control him, but yeah, but still Aljamain had work for those takedowns, and after the third round, really couldn't get a takedown afterwards in that fight. And and Marab is not a guy who's going to get on your back and control you, use his jiu-jitsu like Al Jermaine's story. He's just not. He's going to try to take you down, try to hold you down, at least. And Jan tends to do... Jan does a good job at, st at preventing that from happening. I mean, he fought a guy in Magomed. Magomed has got great wrestling and stuff, kind of like um, Marab Devastrelli. And he was able to to do well in the second fight against Magomed. Magomed up and stuff a lot of his takedowns in their second fight and beat him. So Jan's used to Jan, Jan has fought a guy like Marab, and Marab's striking is not that not existent. It's terrible. And the thing is, we saw in the, his Marab, not Marab's last fight, the fight prior to his last fight against Marma Rice, where Marma Rice almost finished him. He 10 8 him in that first round. And Marma Rice didn't get tired. It didn't get then well, then always had that problem with gassing out. He probably would pull away Marab in the second round. But he got tired, and Marab was able to take advantage of that and able to finish him. And Pierre Jan don't get tired like that. Pierion's not a guy who's gonna, you know, hurt you badly and then just get exhausted because of the way his body's, you know, his muscles or anything like that. No, nah, he's he's got good cardio. He's gonna be in there. He beats you up one round. He's gonna be in there the next round. Be able to beat you up and probably take you out. And I think Marab having that striking weakness and he and he's shown that he can get hit. 
especially against and, and Pierre Young does got power in his hands too. I think the fact that Marav's gonna probably have a little bit harder time, especially if fight goes on, keep going, getting takedowns and holding down Yon potential. Really, I think he's gonna have a harder time getting takedowns than he expects, and I, and I think Yon's gonna do a much better job defending them and probably getting up from some of them and just frustrating Marab potentially. And as the fight keeps going, he's not gonna exactly gas out because Yon's got good take that a uh, good on um, cardio, and I think it's gonna leave Marab open to getting hits as his striking defense isn't exactly striking in all there. I'm not saying he gets hit a lot, but he, but at the same time, Marab Marais. Who's got who's a pretty good striker himself can hit you. Yan, who also a good striker, can hit you too. And also, he's got hands, he's got power in his hands and doesn't get tired. I think this fight favors Yan. And the fact it's five rounds, something Rob's not used to. Uh, right now, I gotta go Pierre Yan. I think Yan will win this fight. Just personally. Probably a decision for 48, 47, or maybe 49, 46 him. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Big fight in the Bantamweight division. See what's next for I can't wait to see that fight. It's a month from now. Man, it's gonna come out just like that. This fight. As we can transition from that fight to the big fight just, that just got announced recently in the featherweight division. This is a big one, too. A massive one. I mean, hang on. Let me just sneeze real quick. Sorry about that. Just had to sneeze. Um, anyway, uh, Max Holloway and Arnold Allen for April 15th, which is probably the main event of that card. The main event for April 15th is... As Holloway and Arnold Allen are fighting each other in a big featherweight matchup. This is Max Holloway's first fight since losing Alexander Volkanovski for the featherweight title back in July. Going officially 0-3 against um, Volkanovski. Although, in my opinion, he's 1-2 against him. He won that second fight to me. Holloway did, but lost the first one. Clearly lost the third round. I mean, clearly. And Arnold Allen's come off that victory over Calvin Cater. Unfortunately, you know, Calvin did injure himself in that fight. You know, he had that weird jumping, like, knee attempt and then just landed awkwardly and basically tore his ACL you know Arnold Allen did have some did do decently in that fight prior to Calvin Kier doing that but Arnold Allen's right on a I believe a 10 fight win streak something like that they had 10 fight win streak in the UFC and for Arnold Allen if he can be Max Holloway he's definitely done enough to earn a title fight It'd be undeniable at this point being a former champion number one contender the guy in Holloway who's only lost to Volkanovski in the featherweight division well, not in, well, in the, in, in the last 10 years, because he did lose to McGregor in, in the featherweight division, but that was in 2013. Since that McGregor lost in 2013, Max Holloway has only lost to Volkanovski in the featherweight division. I mean, let that sink in. That just shows you how good, how dominant he's been in that division Holloway has. Shows you how good Volkanovski is, too. But, um... Arnold Allen beats Vulcan. I mean, Holloway, you can't deny the title fight. I know he might have to wait for a while because Yair Rodriguez and Brian and Brian, Josh Emmett, excuse me, are fighting for the um, featherweight, interim featherweight title. And the winner of that fight is going to fight Volkanovski next. So he might have to wait a while on Arnold Allen. But at the same time, he, if he wins this fight, I think it's what, 10, 11 fights in a row he's won? At that point, you can't deny Arnold Allen a title fight anymore. What, what more does he got to do? Being all the guys he's put in front of him, and he's been more active. The one complaint against Arnold Allen was he wasn't active enough. And now this, this is going to be, what, his third fight in that past um, 13 months. So he's actually starting to be an active fighter, finally. That was always the one not against him. He would fight once a year, and then fight. Now he fought twice last year, and now within a 13-month period, going back to March of 2022, he's fighting three times in a 13-month period. So you got to give him credit there. He's actually doing what he needs to do to earn a title fight. But can Arnold Allen beat Max Holloway? That's the question. We know what's at stake for Arnold Allen. Holloway, it's he's in limbo right now because even if he beats Arnold Allen, he's not getting a, a nerf fight with Volkanovski. They're losing to him officially three times. Even if you want to give him the second fight, still one and two against him. I don't know they're going to give him a third. It's like they're, it's like they're, not like if he was not like if the, if the judges gave him the second fight and he lost the third fight that UFC be so gun ho of giving him that freaking fourth fight with um, Volkanovski. So, I mean, I don't know what's next for Holloway, personally, if he does beat Arnold Allen. I, I think he should go up and wait. Just build, build up some muscle. Go 155, officially. Just do... Just just fight there. Now, granted, to be fair, that could backfire, because Volkanovski could be the 155 champion. It's like, damn, what the heck I, What the heck am I going to do now? Guy beat me three times as a freaking at that weight class, the champion. Now I got 
to be fair, that could be a possibility. But still, it's better there than freaking 145. Because, I mean, it's not a guarantee Volkanovski beats Islam. But, um, yeah, but let me, let me talk about the fight for itself. Holloway, I think Holloway's going to win this fight. I like Holloway's chances. I think this fight favors Holloway, considering Aaron Allen's never gone five rounds in the UFC. Calling Marab. He might he might have gone to the regional scene prior to UFC. I'm not sure, but I don't think he's ever gone. No, he's never gone five rounds in the UFC. The Cater fight was scheduled five rounds, but I only went to the second round because of the injury Calvin Carey did to himself. But, um... Holloway, we know he's got a good gas tank. He can go five rounds. He's done so many times. And Holloway's striking is pretty damn good. I mean, so is Arnold Allen's. They have two elite strikers. And the one thing, if Arnold Allen is going to win, he's probably going to have to knock out Holloway early. Because if he can't do that, he's, I don't think he's got chins against Holloway. And Holloway, we know, I know Holloway time, does get hit a lot. I think, he get, I think he's taking the most absorbed strikes out of any fighter in UFC history. Now, granted, Holloway's had a lot of fights in the UFC. He's been in the UFC for over 10 years, so... He does have more fights than, than most fighters do in the UFC, but at the same time, he, does, he has been hit a lot. But he's taking a lot of time off. I mean, it's going to be, what, nine months since he last fought. And also, he doesn't spar, so he's not taking too much damage. That does help him with his chin and stuff. But at the same time, you never know. I mean, who, if Who knows? Maybe Holloway's chin goes away or gets cracked, and then all of a sudden, R. Allen can put him away. It's possible because R. Allen, R. Allen does have that hand speed. I mean, he's got knockout power and great hand speed. If you don't believe me, watch some of his previous fights, with, especially the Dan Hooker fight and also other fights too, where he showcased how his hand speed. Even the Calvin Cater fight, you can see he was like, his hands he, his hands were a lot quicker than Cater at you know in their fight. So if he's able to use that hand speed to really knock Calvin down and really take out his chin early, that's. That's how he's gonna have to win because other than that, other than getting him early in the first round, maybe or maybe second round, even early second round, I just don't see R. Allen winning. Because one thing about Allen is that I've never seen him go five rounds, and if you watch some of his fights, he tends to slow down, you know, get a little little winded as the fight goes on in the third round. I mean, the best example of this is the Sadiq Youssef fight, where it wasn't like it was a crazy pace. It wasn't that crazy a pace at all, for I remember it was. It was like a decent pace. It wasn't like it was like high pace back and forth. It wasn't. Arnold Allen was going for cap kicks, and he landed some. I think he missed some, too, if I, re if I remember correctly. Like I said, it's been a minute. Like, I, I remember most of it, not all of it. And I remember Arnold Allen at dirt route was kind of gassed. It kind of, like, exhausted, despite not being a crazy pace. And you said was able to win that round. You know, Arnold Allen did enough to win that fight. And to me, it's like, man, you're getting gassed. Against Sadiq Youssef in a non-crazy pace dirt three fight round three fight three round fight, it's like damn, what's gonna happen when you fight Holloway, who can go five rounds, got a good gas tank, and can and is not and is able to um, excuse me, and he's got great hands too, and also can take you down. I know he didn't do it against Volkanovski, but if remember against the Yair fight, he showcases wrestling against Yair, and was able to um, use his wrestling. And, and use it and showcase his skills that he has more than just his hands. So, I mean, if you're, if you're Arnold Allen, if you're not careful, you might just get taken down by Holloway and just get dominated there. And Holloway could definitely do that. I could see him doing that as well. But also, he's, it's not like Holloway hasn't fought great strikers. He's fought great strikers and done well. I mean, look what he did at Calvin Cater. He beat him up badly in one of the greatest performances. I've, probably the greatest performance I've ever seen a fighter perform in a in a five round main event that went to the decision, what he did to Calvin Cater is one of the it's, it's one of the greatest performances I've ever seen ever. It's for me top five easily, maybe the greatest performance a fighter's ever done in UFC history. And so we know that he can just because you got good striking doesn't mean Holloway's in trouble. We you see him against great strikers, he's held his own, done pretty damn good work. I mean, guys like that, he's being Cub Swanson, he's got good striking, oh, Jose Aldo twice, obviously. Yeah, here's got, you know, good striking. You know, it's a little bit different, but still. And there's some other guys I'm probably forgetting who are good strikers. He's being up. I mean, Pettis, Anthony Pettis at 145. You know, he didn't belong, but still. So, yeah, I personally got, um, I personally got Holloway win this fight. I think I see Holloway's going to win a decision or maybe a late, a late stoppage probably because of the fact he's been five rounds. He's got the cardio prove it, the experience. And so I see his chin fall off. I, I'm expecting his chin to hold up. And he's done well against good strikers. And he's shown that he will use wrestling. He can use wrestling like he did against Yair in their fight. 
And Arlo Allen, I just haven't seen him go five rounds. That gas tank is still a question mark for me. I don't know if he can actually win a five round decision. Five round decision. And I don't know if he has the card to keep up with it. And against Holloway, if you get tired, that's just the worst thing because Holloway put on you. And you might get, he, I can see Holloway putting on Allen as he's gas and just taking him out that way. That could, that, I definitely could see that. So that, you know, Ario, Allen's lack of cardio so far for what I've seen. I think it's his biggest downfall. So that's why I'm going with Max Holloway in this fight. And like I said, Ireland wins probably early in the first round or second round, potentially. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on these fights. Like I said, I'll talk more about them as we as we get closer to the fight. It's the fights himself. Can't wait to see these fights. Excited, especially this, especially the Holloway Arnold Allen one. That's really exciting. I mean, I mean it's a big test for Arnold Allen. Can't wait to see what he does and to see what Holloway. I like seeing Holloway fight. I, 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 unfortunately, April 15th, man. The UFC 27 card is pretty nice. And then you got a great main event next the week after. Can't wait. Man, April is going to be a big month for the UFC. Can't wait for that. Really, the springtime, you know, March, April so far. It's going to be freaking epic. Can't wait. Whew. Um, thank, but thank you guys so much for watching my, um, for watching this YouTube channel, watching this video on YouTube or watching this on Rumble or Listen to us on Google, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the our podcasting platforms. I'm, I'm forgetting at the moment. My apologies. Thank you guys for listening and watching to us. Appreciate your love support. Without you guys, this channel is nothing without you. Without y'all, you guys make this channel possible. So I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. And thank you guys for watching. Leave a thumbs up. Tell me what you think of these fights. I'm excited for you. Who thinks it's going to win and why. And I'll see you next time. Have a good day, good night, and peace.